This problem looks pretty complicated with this scary, elaborate looking diagram, and there is a little bit of math here that can seem kind of ugly, but fortunately, it's not too bad conceptually. Really, the important thing to understand about this problem, right off the bat, is that the pressures at point A and B are equal. Remember that pressure is dependent on vertical depth in a fluid. So since we have the same fluid, water, connecting points A and B, and since points A and B are at the same height, the same depth, that means that the pressure is the same. If the pressures weren't the same, then the fluid would flow throughout the tube until they were the same. And the problem just tells us that it's at equilibrium now. So we can assume that the pressure at point A is equal to the pressure at point B. B. So what we can do in this problem is write out more elaborate expressions for P sub A and P sub B, and then go from there to find the density of the oil. So first off, let's start with P sub A. So the pressure at point A, first there's going to be the atmospheric pressure, P naught. Then there's going to be the gauge pressure, which is the pressure from that column of oil just above where point P is. And so remember that gauge pressure is equal to density multiplied by the gravitational acceleration multiplied by the depth. So this is going to be the density of the oil multiplied by the gravitational acceleration multiplied by the depth of the oil. So that is our expression for the pressure at point A. Now let's do the same thing for the pressure at point P. So there's the atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure from the height of that column of water. So it's the density of water multiplied by the gravitational acceleration, once again, then multiplied by the depth of that water that is above point P. So this is our equation, and there are a few things we can do to simplify it. Since both sides of the equation have P naught, the atmospheric pressure, we can cancel those out. Then both sides of the equation have G, the gravitational acceleration, so those can cancel out. Since, that's, since it's the, in the only term left after we get rid of the atmospheric pressures. So our equation now simplifies to the density of oil times the height of the oil is equal to the density of the water times the height of the water. And since the density of oil is what we're trying to find, we'll algebraically solve that by dividing both sides of the equation by the height of the oil. So rho sub w times h sub w divided by h sub oil. Now let's just plug in the values we have. Remember that the density of water is equal to 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Then we're multiplying this by the height difference of the water, which we can see from the diagram, because we're looking for the height of this little column of water just above point P, which we can see is going to be 27.2 centimeters minus 8.62 centimeters, based on the geometry of this little situation here. So that is 0.272 meters minus 0 0.0862 meters. Then we divide this by the height of the oil, which is, again, just 27.2 centimeters or 0.272 meters. So we put this into a calculator, and then we find the density of oil as 683 kilograms per cubic meter. And so that is the answer to this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me out in making more videos like this. And if you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below, and I'll try to help you out as best as I can. That's all for now, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.